Hello, I'm Willie George. I want to welcome you to this edition of the Cimarron Trail. In this episode, we're talking about the color of love. We're telling you that God has created all men, no matter what the color of their skin, to have the same color of blood. That means there's really no difference in us. And the scripture teaches us that we're not to be prejudiced against one another, especially on the account of skin color. In this episode, you're going to hear a racial slur, a word that we don't approve of, but we put it into the episode to help you to see just how ugly prejudice can be. So right now, let's take a look at the color of love. Fine looking mare, that ago. Wonder what he'd take for. Kindly partial this stud horse myself. Can I be of help to you, gentlemen? <laughs> May he be of help to us. <laughs> we want your horses. They ain't for sale. I just bought them myself. Gonna start a breeding farm up on the verdigrees. Maybe you didn't hear what he said. He said we want your horses. We ain't got no intention of buying them, boy. Don't worry, I'm not gonna hurt you. You're lucky to be alive. Doc, can he talk yet? I don't know, can you? <clears throat> yeah, I reckon. <clears throat> Who did this to you? Ain't no sense me telling you. Why not? Because they was white. <clears throat> well, that doesn't make a bit of difference. They still broke the law. Now, what happened? I bought me two purebred horses down in Texas. I was aiming to start me a breeding farm on the verdigrees. A sore old man with two white socks and a stud horse. I stopped for grub in Silver City and two gunslingers jumped me. You got any idea who they were? One was called Latigo. The other, I don't know. Well, as soon as you're able to travel, my deputy's gonna take you home. Marshal, you aim to go after these men? Yes, sir, I do, Mr. Uh... Clemens, Isaac Clemens. Yes, sir, I aim to go after these men. Hey, BG. Who is he? Oh, his name's Isaac Clemens. He'll be ready to travel in a couple of days. When he is, I want you to haul him back up his place on the Vertigers. 
Wait a minute. You want me to what? I want you to haul him back up to his place on the Verdigris. Well, now, Marshal, he's a, he's a... He's a black man. Yeah, I just didn't want to come right out and say it. Were you afraid he might eat you? Well, no, but I just ain't never rode in a wagon with a black man before. Well, Nicodemus, I don't reckon he'll ride any different than a white man. I'll be back as soon as I catch those horse thieves. Well, Pete. Marshal, am I glad to see you. How's everything going up on Lazy B? Well, I got troubles, Bill. Rustlers. Three steers last week, a dozen more last night. Well, you men on alert? Well, I can't watch the whole spread. You know how big the Lazy B is. Well, I'll look into it as soon as I round up a couple of horse thieves. Oh, you got to come now. Pete, I got to catch the two who beat a man half to death and stole his horses. I took his complaint first, and I got honored. Now, Bill, we've known each other for years. Look, you know me, Pete. You know I'm fair. Well, all right. Howdy, Mr. Bridwell. Howdy, Nicodemus. Say, Nicodemus, you know anything about that man that took a beating and had his horses stolen? Not much. Whereabouts does he live? Well, I understand he's got a place down on the Verdigree, but he ain't there. He's over at the doc's office right now. Well, much obliged, Nicodemus. Hello, Doc. Mr. Bridwell. What can I do for you? I'm here to see your patient, the one that took a beating and had his horses stolen. I want to pay him for the cost of the horses so he'll drop the charges. Well, he can speak for himself. That's him. But, but, he's... He's a black man. Tried to scrub it off, but had to give it up. I'm afraid he'll always be black. Now, that's not funny, Doc. No, it isn't, Mr. Bridwell. But you are going to pay him for those horses now, aren't you? No, I'm not. I'm not doing business with a black man. Wait till I get a hold of Marshal Gunner. Guess you're not going to be doing any business with Mr. Bridwell, Isaac. <laughs> what is the matter with you, Bill Gunner? I thought we were friends. You're going after the black man's horses before you stop those rustlers from stealing my cattle? That's right. I got his report first. Well, have you lost your mind? This country was made for us, Bill. White people. The blacks got no place here. Somebody brought them over here, Pete. They didn't swim the ocean just so they could live in slavery. Well, it's not right. I'm a landowner. I'm helping to build this territory. I've got a family, kids. People depend on me. So does the black man, Pete. Now, his place may not be as big as yours, and he doesn't run 10,000 head of cattle. He works all year long to make what you earn in a week. But he scrimped and saved to buy two horses to build his dream. Somebody stole them, and I aim to get them back. And then I'll help you get the rustlers. Well, forget it. I don't need any help from a nigger-loving marshal. God forgive me. For what? I never realized how ugly it was for a man to hate somebody just on account of the color of his skin. Howdy, ma'am. I'm Bill Gunner. I'm the United States Marshal. About five days ago, there was a black man came through here riding a sawed horse with white socks. You remember him? I remember him. He bought some supplies from me. 
Well, he was jumped by two men, two white men, one of them named Latigo. You know who I'm talking about? Latigo's a troublemaker. Runs with a man named Crump. I haven't seen him for several days. Well, thanks, ma'am, for your help. Mister, I'm Bill Gunner, United States Marshal. I'm looking for two men named Latigo and Crump. Don't know them. Mister, I'm not convinced you're telling me the truth. Now, what do you know about Tom Latigo? He left town last week. On a new horse? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate the information. You're wasting your time, Marshal. Folks in these parts ain't real anxious to take black over white. It's not the color of a man's skin I'm interested in. It's right and wrong. Those men you're after, Crump and Latigo, they went south to Kyamichi country. What made you change your mind about helping me? When I was born, my mama almost died. She was saved by a midwife. A black woman? Thanks, mister. That's a step in the right direction. Got any kids? Three. Three. What do you eat? Food, mainly. No, I mean, what kind of food? All kinds. All kinds. I don't know what it is, but he's lame. That's it. Are you sure? Get them going. See if it ain't. You know horses, do you? I was raised with them. My daddy ran a stable on a big plantation down in Arkansas. He was a slave? Born one and died one. I was born one, but I aim to die free. What's it like being a slave and all? Don't know much, I reckon. Abe Lincoln freed the slaves when I was only eight. Well, ain't it great to be free? It's all right. All right. Ain't you happy to be free? Oh, I'm happy. I'm coming this far. We got a ways to go. What you said about having a ways to go, what do you mean? Well, it ain't the same for black folks as it is with whites. How so? Can a black man eat in any restaurant in your town without causing a ruckus? And if he dresses in fine clothes, don't people think he stole them? Can he put his children in the same school as a white man? Don't say anything more. I know what you mean, but it'll change someday. Nope, it won't ever change. Your boss or friend, he won't get my horses back. Oh, he'll look for a day, maybe. 
As soon as he run trouble on count me being a black man, he just go look for that white man's cattle. Now, you listen to me, Isaac Clemens. If Marshal Gunner said he'd get your horses, he'll get them. Not because you're black and not because you're white. You'll get them because it's right. We'll see. Yeah, we will see. Yeah. Hey, baby. Hey. Hey, boy. All right, honey. Honey, this here's Nicodemus. He brought me all the way here from Dry Goats. What about the horses? Two men beat me in Silver City and stole the horses. What are we going to do? Marshall went looking for them. Hope we'll get them back. You'll get your horses back. Now, I guess I better be going. These horses ain't ready to make no trip back to Dry Goats. Well, I, I figured I'd rest them up the road a piece. You can rest them here. And we'll feed you, too. Go ahead on, honey. Oh, uh, that's OK. I, I reckon I better be going. You too good to eat with a black man? Is that it? No, I ain't too good to eat with a black man. I'll show you a thing or two about eating. <laughs> How much you reckon we'll get for these horses at Red Dog? Depends. Maybe $500 for the pair. That's too much money for a black man anyhow. You, uh, you reckon the law will come after us? Yeah, I reckon not. Law don't work the same for black men as it does for a white. <laughs> it does now. It's the marshal. Marshal, you got to get me to a doctor. The bleeding ain't stopped. We'll lead him to Silver City. Closest doctor's in Silver City. All right. We'll go there first. Anybody here know where I can find a doctor? Got a prisoner out here that needs some help. Boys, this marshal's bringing me in because of a lying black man. I bought these horses fair and square, but he's lied to the marshal. That's right. I saw it myself. Now, you ain't gonna let us hang because of a lying black man. No. You ain't taking them in, marshal. You can't take us all. No, but I can take you out. Two or three others. You're bluffing. Boys, get his gun. Hold it. Charlie? What's kind of into you, Charlie? Marshal's only doing his job. Latigo and Crump stole those horses, and we all know it. Yeah, but it was from a black man. You want us to hang because of a black man? Black, white, they don't make a difference. You broke the law. He's right, boys. Throw down your guns. We're shedding up blood in this country over this issue. No need to shed any more. Well, you got them. Yeah. Lock them up. And as soon as these horses are arrested, you can take them back to the rightful owner. I'll be happy to. Besides, I'm hungry. Hungry? Yeah. You know, I misjudged that Marshal. I never figured he'd go through with it. I ain't never been treated that way by a white man. Well, this goes to show you, never judge a man on account of the color of his skin. Oh, Mr. Clement, try another piece of that fried chicken, please, ma'am. White meat or dark meat, Nicodemus? Both. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. 
When God created all things, the one thing that we see is He believes in variety. He didn't just make one kind of tree. He didn't just make one kind of animal. He didn't just make one kind of fish, one kind of plant. God made many kinds of many things, and He made many kinds of people. Now, in the beginning, there were just two people. And all of the races of people that we have on the earth today came from that original pair. Apparently, they were able to have all kinds of different children. And I want you to listen to what the Scripture says here in the book of Acts. The Bible says in chapter 17, verse 26, that God has made of one blood all nations of men to dwell on all the face of the earth. You know what that means? It means that no matter what a man's skin color is, he still has one color of blood. And it's important for us to understand that no one man is better than another man on account of the color of his skin. It's important that we don't have prejudice in our hearts toward other people just because of their skin color. The scripture makes it clear that God believes in variety. And sometimes people of different skin colors are different in some ways. They have different customs, perhaps even a different culture. But that doesn't mean that one race is superior to the other. If we have prejudice based on skin color and hate other people just because of their differences, the Bible tells us that we don't have the love of God. The Bible says if you hate your brother, you're a murderer and you can't have the life of God in your heart. And so the love of Christ is for all men regardless of the color of their skin. And it's important that we learn how to be fair in our dealings with all people no matter what their skin color. It doesn't matter what society thinks. What matters is what God thinks. He sees how we treat our fellow man no matter what other people are thinking. And so I want to encourage you to walk always with the love of God. This is easy for some people and harder for others, but the truth of the matter is we can all walk in the love of God if we have Jesus Christ living in our hearts. And if you've never trusted in Him to become your Lord and personal Savior, today you can do just that. You can do it by praying this prayer with me and by meaning it in your heart. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask you to send Jesus to live in my heart. I believe that He died on the cross for me. I believe that He was raised from the dead. And I ask you now for Jesus to come and live inside me to change me, to wash away my sin, to make me pure as snow. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer in a minute, Jesus heard it. He came into your heart. And if you will trust in Him, believe in Him, continue to live for Him, read His Word and honor what you see written in this book, you'll have the power and strength to be free from prejudice of any kind.